Philly, what the fuck is up? Holy shit, thank you. Thank you for coming out. This is awesome. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. I feel like I made it weird already. Cool, all right. What the fuck? <laughs> Just kind of my vibes today. Thanks for coming out. A bit hungover, I gotta tell you. I realize I have a drinking problem. I got a bad drinking problem that I need to take care of. All right, relax, sir. <laughs> Here's my thing. I realize I have a problem. I just haven't done anything about it. This is what happened. I had a bit of an epiphany. It was two Friday nights ago. I was at a bar. I was drinking by myself. It was like midnight. I had like, I don't know, eight beers in me. Nothing crazy. Just chilling, you know? I go outside to smoke a cigarette because I'm an adult. I'll do whatever the fuck I want to do when I'm partying. And I get outside and across from me is a 24-hour gym, which is the last thing you want to see when you're out drinking and smoking by yourself. It's floor to ceiling windows, a row of treadmills facing out, and just 12 top jack dudes just fucking crushing it. And I'm at the window like, Ugh. And I emotionally collapse on myself. I'm like, dude, you're the biggest piece of shit. You gotta get your act together. You're always out here smoking and drinking. Be like these guys. These guys are better in their lives. And I go, you know what? Hold on. Fuck these dudes. It's Friday night at midnight. Go live a life, you fucking lunatics. Then I realize it was Wednesday night. I'm like, oh fuck, I got a problem. This is way worse than I thought it was. I should probably talk to somebody. My drinking's getting me fat, too. It is. Over the past two years, I put on 30 pounds from drinking. And uh, it's because I was drinking IPAs for a very long time. And be careful. If you're out there drinking IPAs, be careful. I did the research. There's up to 350 calories in an IPA. That's the equivalent of one bologna sandwich. That's crazy. That means I go to the bar on the weekend and eat 13 bologna sandwiches. And then I walk out at 3 a.m. like, who wants pizza, huh? I haven't eaten all day. I'm starving. <laughs> Trying to stay healthy, man. It's tough because uh, there's an uptick in COVID right now. We travel around the country and you see more and more people wearing masks. You see them on a plane or at an airport or at a show. And I don't judge. I don't care. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. I try to come with compassion. I go, you know what? That was a crazy couple of years for everybody. I don't know this person's life. Maybe they have a pre-existing condition. Maybe they spend a lot of time with their early grandparents. I don't know, and quite frankly, I don't give a fuck. But recently I was on a plane and the guy I was supposed to be sitting next to wasn't wearing a mask. And then I sat down and he fucking put on a mask. <laughs> and I'm like, I'll spit in your fucking mouth right now, dude. That is the most disrespectful shit I've ever seen. He took one look at me, he's like, I don't know what he has, but I don't fucking want it. And the crazy thing is, I got home that night and found out I did have COVID. I was like, damn, you're good, dude. You smelt that shit on me, goddamn. I got married right before COVID. I, I, got I just celebrated three years of being married. And she's not here, it doesn't matter. Okay. She's great. She, I, I, I realize I'm a jealous husband, though. I'm a very jealous husband. Any other dudes jealous? Yeah, one guy just went, I am, sir, yes. Don't even look at her, dude. <laughs> I found out why I'm jealous. I'm jealous because my wife is significantly more attractive than I am. I landed myself a hot lady and uh, dudes hit on her when she's by herself. She'll be at the store, a dude will hit on her and that's not what bothers me. I'm so fucked up in my head. What bothers me is she gets hit on and then comes home and tells me how nice this guy was she just met. <laughs> and I can't let that slide. I'm like, babe, he was trying to fuck you. She's like, no, uh some people are just nice. I'm like, no, they're not. She goes, well, we just choose to see the world differently or some fucking hot girl shit. I'm like, this is the real world, sweetheart. I'm in the trenches of this motherfucker, okay? This isn't even a joke. Last week, she came home and was like, hey, listen, I'm taking the dog to the park. This guy wants to take pictures of me and the dog in the park. I'm like, yeah, well, we're not fucking doing that. <laughs> and she's like, why not? I'm like, babe, because he's trying to fuck you. She's like, no, -uh, how do you know? I go, I don't know. I've walked that dog every day. No one's ever stopped to take my fucking pictures. No one's ever been like, hey, Kevin, go throw one on a tube top and meet me in the park, you know? <laughs> it's never happened once. So I lost my shit. I'm not proud of how I acted. I lost my shit. I got anger problems, we're standing in our living room. 
and we're screaming at each other like a manager and an umpire. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like kicking dirt on her. I'm like, you're not fucking going. She's like, you can't tell me what to do. I'm like, oh, I'm telling you what to do. <laughs> She's like, I'm a grown woman. I make my own decisions. I'm going to the park. I said, you know what, babe? You're right. You are a grown woman. You make your own decisions. You go to the park. But also, I'm a grown man, and I kind of just decided I want to go to the park right now, too. That's crazy. <laughs> We're both going to be at the park at the same time, and I'm furious. This is insane. <laughs> what are the chances? <laughs> She's like, you better not cause a scene. I'm like, I'm causing the biggest fucking scene <laughs> you've ever seen. <laughs> Everyone's going to be mad I came to the park today. <laughs> the squirrels are going to be upset that I showed up. That's how big of a scene I'm causing when we get to the park. So it's a two block walk to the park. I'm seeing red. I'm like, I gotta fight this guy. This is crazy. And I go, hold on. Maybe my anger is, I'm getting ahead of myself here. And I go, maybe he doesn't know you're in a relationship. I go, babe, hold on a second. Before I go nuts, I go, did you tell him you were, you were married? And she goes, I did. And I go, this motherfucker still invited you? I have to hit him with a rock. This is nuts. <laughs> so we get to the park and I'm mean mugging every dude in the park. <laughs> I'm like, who's trying to fuck my wife? This is crazy. <laughs> and then I see a guy with a camera around his neck and he's waving and he is the gayest dude in the world. <laughs> and I was like, damn, I got so mad, I forgot gay guys existed for a minute. <laughs> Once I saw he was gay, I was like, babe, take your top off, show him the goods. <laughs> Start an OnlyFans out here. Start pulling your weight in this fucking relationship. She's great, she's just very forgetful. That's my one pet peeve I have with her. And I don't care when she forgets something that only affects her, but when she forgets something that affects me, I get furious. She forgets her ID every time we go to the bar. Without, without fail, she forgets her ID. We walked into a bar recently. I was like, hey man, let me get two beers. He's like, let me see some ID. It's like, dude, first of all, I'm 37. I got the hairline, just give me the fucking beers, you know? <laughs> and then my wife goes, oh my God, I forgot my ID. And he's like, well, I can't serve her, but I can serve you. What do you want? I'm like, dude, this is my wife. I'll vouch for her. We're both 37. Just give us two beers. And he gets all serious. He goes, I got a job to do, man. Like he's a fucking state trooper all of a sudden. He goes, what if she's 18? What if she's in college? I'm like, okay, I'll live in my fucking fantasy world with you for a minute. Take a trip down my browser history, if you will. But if she was 18 and in college, she wouldn't be dating me. And he goes, oh, good point. Two beers coming right up. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm over carding. I am. You probably got carded tonight. I get that. This is a performance venue. That makes sense. But it's like, if you're in the audience and you work at like an Irish pub or a sports bar and you're a bartender, stop carding people. It doesn't matter. What's the worst that's going to happen? Somebody gets a beer that shouldn't have a beer. The world's crumbling around us and that's where we're putting our foot down every day. And people have come up to me after shows and go, that's irresponsible. What if a 16-year-old kid comes in, but he looks like he's 30? It's like, that's the kid that needs a fucking drink. <laughs> like, that kid's seen some shit, you know what I mean? He's got city miles on him, that fucking kid. Make it a double, put it on my tab, what are we doing here? <laughs> Do we have any, any, any kids that are 21 in here? Early 20s? Woo! Yeah, yeah, what are you, bro? 22, nice, who are you here with? Your girlfriend, nice. This is gonna get weird for a sec, but. <laughs> I feel like hand jobs catch a really bad rap in your early 20s. They do, right? Let's just, let's just say, you, let's just say you, know, you leave here. I'm sorry to bring your girlfriend into my filth, but you seem like a nice lady. But let's say you, you give him a hand job on the Uber home or whatever, you know what I mean? And then your buddy calls you in the morning. He's like, dude, what'd you do last night? You're like, ah, I went to the comedy show. And on the way home, you know, me and Tracy, we were drunk. She ended up giving me a hand job in the Uber. It was the hottest shit ever. Your boy would be like, damn, dude, what a sick 22-year-old night. Congratulations. That's better than nothing. Sarah, how old are you? 49. Yeah, okay. If you got a hand job tonight and called your buddy in the morning, he'd be like, what are you doing? Go to work, motherfucker. Like, 
We got bills to pay, dude. I don't give a fuck about your hand job stories. But I don't get it because dudes love hand jobs. We do. We just position in our head wrong. I'm 37 years old. I've been giving myself a hand job every day for 22 fucking years. <laughs> Haven't missed a shift. Overnights, weekends. Whatever you need, I'm your guy. You know what I mean? I'll join the union if I have to. I don't care. I'll be a foreman in like two weeks. You know what I mean? So it's not the hand job we don't like, it's the hand. <laughs> Bear with me. This is my theory. Because <laughs> for the past 22 years, I'm used to my man hand. I used to work construction and shit. And then a girl will come over with her dainty, little manicured hand and it's like, you gotta fucking... <laughs> you gotta grip it and rip it, sweetheart, let's go! I need a fucking meat hook down here. Let's do this. <laughs> That's why I make my wife shovel the sidewalk in the winter. <laughs> Put on a fake mustache, do something for me, you know? I'm trying to get the job done over here. I told my friends I got a hand job one time and they all made fun of me. They were like, hand job? Pfft. What are you, 11? It's like, first of all, what 11 year olds are getting fucking hand jobs? That's a school I want to go to. Not now, then. I want to go then. <laughs> Be weird if I showed up on the playground like, Billy, Timmy, where are you going? You know? I don't know why I made them two boys' names, but that's what happened. <laughs> There's a large trend in pornography over the past couple of years. That, is over that guy started clapping. He's like, finally! <laughs> this guy's up there talking about his wife. Let's finally get to the good stuff. Over the past couple years, it's, it's, it's primarily one category. Do you want to volunteer what it is, gentlemen that clapped? Stepmom, step yeah. That's a little, it's a little deeper than that. It's stepbrother, stepsister porn, yeah. This is where the women's faces are disgusted at this. <laughs> Women are always like, is it naughty nurses? It's like, we're fucking way past naughty nurses. <laughs> we're fucking our stepsisters, that's what we're doing. And it's not for me, it's not my cup of tea, but it's also like, hey, I'm a progressive guy. It's 2024, do whatever you want, I don't care. The, my whole thing is just label it, that's all I ask. Just label it and put it in your weird corner of the internet so I'm not, I don't stumble upon it and find this weird incest storyline unfolding on me, you know? Cause I'm old school, just give me a plumber who's like, what the fuck happened to my pants or whatever, you know? <laughs> I'm a meat and potatoes kind of guy, what can I say? Call me old fashioned, I guess. So recently my wife's like, hey, I'm going out for a couple hours. I'm like, okay, honey, you have a good time fucking a guy in a park or whatever. And I'm like, this is perfect time for me to watch a movie. It was a two minute movie, a short film, if you will. Kind of a kind of sore, you know? And the two people in the movie were Russian, right? And there was a started up, close up on the guy and he goes, I want to make a sex with you. And she goes, but you're my step a brooder. And I'm like, why the fuck's he asking her in English? You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> this lunatic is not only trying to hook up with his stepsister, he's doing it in a second fucking language. That's a level of confidence and swag I could never have. I don't even have a stepsister, but if I did, I sure shit wouldn't go up to her like, hola, como estas? <laughs> Make goose to make sex with you, you know? <laughs> you, know? you just get drunk at Christmas and hope for the best, you know? <laughs> like a goddamn American. <laughs> I am happy I'm married though, because the, uh, the kids, the kids, not the kids, the, the younger generation, the kids in their 20s, not those kind of kids. 
The kids in their 20s have made a lot of regressions sexually. Right now, everything's now non-binary. Gender and sexuality is more fluid. It's on a spectrum. When I was single in my 20s, that wasn't the case. It was more black and white. The only overlap I had of this is I was drunk at a bar. I was 30, and I was talking to this girl who's 21. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, I think she's giving me the vibes. I think I have a shot. So I started hitting on her, and she goes, I'm a lesbian. I'm like, all right, misread that. That's on me. Whatever. So we're hanging out. At the end of the night, she comes up. She goes, listen, I'm going to shoot you straight. I'm a lesbian. I just got out of a four-year relationship with a girl. I just need a really good dick right now. And I was like, I am not your guy. <laughs> you got a stepbrother you can call here. They're pretty good. Are you Russian by any chance? It's been a rough... I, I have personally had a bit of a rough year. Uh, my, my car got stolen over the summer, which fucking sucked. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, it was a Kia. I should tell everybody that. It was a Kia. If you're not familiar, there's a defect in Kias where uh, it takes five seconds, a USB charger, and a third grader, and they steal your car. It's crazy. And it's so popular, there's now a TikTok trend called hashtag Kia Boys, where they film themselves stealing your car, and no one gives a fuck. The cops just watch the videos like, damn, these kids are crazy. Like, no one, no one cares, right? So my, I, I went to go get my car. I hadn't driven in a couple days in New York, and I go to get it, and uh, I get there, and it's not there. And I'm such a dirtbag. My first instinct was like, oh, shit, I owe like $900 in parking tickets. <laughs> they towed my car. And then I saw the broken glass from the window, and I'm like, I don't think the tow truck driver was like, pay your bills, pussy, you know, and like, fuck it. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, they got me. The boys caught me slipping. They got, the Kia boys got me, you know. <laughs> Even the best have bad days, you know what I mean? So I call the cops, the cops come, and this guy cared too much, right? He pulls up, and I, I, I know Philly has it. They, the cop cars have cameras on the back of their car where they drive around and take pictures of every parked car's license plate, and it goes into a database. So if they ever need to know where it was, they can be like, oh, it was on Fish Street two weeks ago, and start from there. I gave him my license plate number, and he goes, holy shit! This just pinged less than an hour ago under the George Washington Bridge. I'm like, all right. He's like, get in. I was like, what? fuck did you just say to me dude he's like get in and opens the back door so there's two of them in the front i get in the back seat of the cop car and we immediately hit i don't know 125 miles an hour we're blowing red lights he's got the sirens and i've never been a big cop guy but i was in the back like dude i'm joining the fucking force tonight this is the sickest shit i've ever been a part of i was practicing my moves i was like nypd motherfuckers like So we get under the George Washington Bridge and he's like, it should be right around here. And I go, holy shit, it's fucking right there. It's right where you said it was gonna be. I go, there it is. And as we get closer, we, re we realize all four windows are smashed out and there's four guys smoking crack in my car. <laughs> Curveball. <laughs> so two of, the, two of the guys smoking crack see us coming, they jump out, they take off running up the highway into oncoming traffic, full crack speed like it was in Tron, dude. They were just like, fuck. <laughs> 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 The other two guys couldn't have been bothered that we showed up. They looked at us like, oh, cool, more people to smoke crack with. Like, they were just chilling. So the cops go into full cop mode. They jump out, guns drawn, like, get out of the car. Let me see your hands. Get out of the car. Let me see your hands. Now I'm in the back seat. I don't know, shitting myself, I think is the clinical term. So they rip them out. They throw them on the hood of the car. They cuff them. And now I start doing the math. I'm like, oh, shit, the only place to put them is in the fucking back seat with me. I didn't know what to do. I was just going to act like one of them. Like, ah, they caught you too, huh? <laughs> Kia boys for life, dog. We got to stick together, man. <laughs> Shout out to the Kia boys, baby. <laughs> Growing up, my parents got divorced. I was a very young age. And uh, the only memory I have of my parents together is them sitting me down and telling me they were getting a, a divorce. Which is like, you know, you gotta hold on to the memories you do have. And, <laughs> and my mom was a single mom for a long time. And money would get tight. We were never poor, but money would get tight for sure. And I remember one time, uh, I was like seven. She was on the phone with my aunt. I was eavesdropping. She didn't know I could hear. And she's like, hey, listen, we gotta cancel the family vacation this year. I just don't have the money to pay for it. Me being seven, I heard that. I'm like, dude, you gotta fucking man up. You know what I mean? Like, you gotta provide for this family, you know? So I march upstairs, I got my footy pajamas on, I get my piggy bank with $32 in it, and I look in the mirror, I'm like, motherfucker, we're going to Disney World. 
I march downstairs, I open it up, I dump it out on the kitchen counter, I go, Mom, I want you to have this. And she took the fucking money. I was like, you bitch. That was just a gesture. I worked for my family too. Working for family is tough, because you, uh, you never know, the hardest part is knowing when and how to quit if you work for your family. Getting the job's easy, you're just like high on the couch and they're like, start unloading boxes or whatever. But trying to quit is tough. Because if you worked at a regular job, you can just march in your boss's office and be like, hey, fuck you, I quit, and like kick over his plant or whatever it is and just leave, that's it, you're done. Never have to see that guy again. I can't march into my dad's office and be like, hey, dad, suck my dick. And then go back to my dad's house. And be like, hey, if you need me, I'll be on the couch, you know? The second worst job I ever worked was I worked at Macy's, the department store. Anybody work retail? Yeah, where'd you work? Sears, nice. Where at? De you worked at Sears in Wilmington, Delaware. That's the front lines of retail, dude. <laughs> Thank you for your service. I appreciate that. God damn. You still do it? No. Do you ever catch anybody stealing at Sears? Always. <laughs> Always. What'd you do? What did you do when you caught them stealing? Just let them go. Yeah, this is an American hero right here. Clap it up for this guy. Who cares? It's not your fucking lawnmower or whatever. I worked at Macy's. I let everybody steal fucking everything at Macy's. It was wide open in the men's department when I was there. I used to let people return shit we didn't even sell. That's how little I cared. I'm like, what do you got? Rollerblades? Take them off. Give them here. I'll give you store credit for them. The height of me not giving a shit at Macy's though was this homeless guy came in, he was getting ready to steal because he kept looking at me and looking at the cameras and looking at me and looking at the, at the cameras and I'm trying to give him the eyes like, dude, I don't give a fuck, you know? Like, take your time, try it on, I don't care. I'll workshop the outfit with you if you want me to. But he's not picking up on my vibe so I just let him wander around. Finally, finally he comes up to my cash register with one pair of socks, that's all he has. After like five minutes of wandering around, he comes up with one pair of dress socks and goes, that's all. I go, all right. And I go to ring him up. I'm like, that'll be $6.99 or whatever. He reaches in his pocket and pulls out one loose credit card. That's it. No wallet, just a loose credit card out of a pair of sweatpants. And he goes to swipe it. I'm like, all right, man, let's see what fucking happens here, you know? <laughs> just like, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. In a lot of retail places, when you swipe your card, your name comes up on our screen. When he swiped his card, his name came up as Deborah O'Hallahan. <laughs> now, I don't want to assume his gender, but he wasn't Deborah O'Hallahan. That's when I went, okay, clearly this is a stolen card. He's trying to make the smallest purchase. We have one pair of socks to see if it works so he can go somewhere else and make a bigger purchase. Also, ironically, I don't know if you guys know this about me. I don't work for Visa. Not my fucking problem. You have a nice day. <laughs> Enjoy Maui or wherever it is you land, you know? So he takes two steps towards the door. I think I'm done with him. He takes two steps towards the door, stops turns around with Oscar award-winning performance, goes, holy shit, I completely forgot, I need $1,000 in gift cards. <sighs> I was like, nicely played, Mrs. O'Hallahan, nicely played. Let's make it 2,000 to be safe, what do you say? It's nice to be home, it's nice to be home in Philly, this is fucking amazing, thank you. It's great. We traveled a lot traveled a lot for comedy and uh, I got to perform in Europe not too long ago and there should be a rule when you get to a country you've never been to when you get to customs they should be like hey man have you been here before and if you say yeah they should go cool enjoy your trip if you say no they should be like yo pop in this room watch this five minute powerpoint because you might see some shit you're not fucking ready for <laughs> I went to England I thought it was going to be like America it's not and that's on me because I'm an uncultured idiot but I didn't know they really dressed their school kids up like Harry Potter and then I was hung over on the subway. We pull up to a stop and 37 fucking wizards got on the train. And I was like, yo, I'm about to fight these kids right now. You know what I mean? I didn't have a wand on me or anything. Damn TSA took my wand, you know? Thanks a lot, Bin Laden. <laughs> Can't fly with a wand anymore. That's crazy. I got to go to Germany too. I perform comedy in Germany. The Germans have a great sense of humor that nobody tells you about. They like talking shit with Americans in like a fun, ball busty, like blue collar, East Coast kind of way. It's always lighthearted. This one time I was at a bar and these four German dudes found out I was American. They came up and they were really gonna fucking razz me. They were like, ah, McDonald's. I was like, ah, World War II, you know. 
It's a little lighthearted ribbon, you know what I mean? It's like not once, but twice. Now fucking kick rocks, will you? Don't make me get the boys back over here. The biggest culture shock I had, though, was I went to a country called the Czech Republic. I didn't even know it existed until I got there. It's fantastic. It's beautiful. I ended up getting a Thai massage from a man in the Czech Republic, which is a long way to go for that to happen. So I'm in the Czech Republic. I don't speak Czech. He's Thai. I don't speak Thai. He doesn't speak English. There's like nine different language barriers that we're maneuvering in this conversation. And I asked for a back and a neck massage. Simple. I remember being at the front desk, like back and neck massage. But I guess somewhere in the Thai, Czech, English language barrier, that means work on the butt for 15 minutes. Because this guy acted like I didn't have a back or a neck. He treated me like I was just a butt. He came in, put one hand on each cheek and just went to town. So for 15 minutes, I'm just humping the ground like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And then he goes, okay, turn over. I was like, I don't think that's a good idea for either one of us. Because we both might get something we're not looking for. Or I'm going to get something I'm looking for and my dad was right this whole fucking time. All right, Philly, that's my time. Thank you so much.